Hey everyone, it's Pat from Pat's Ever Music and today we're looking at the circle of fifths. Now this is, you can think of it as remembering all the different notes that are in different key signatures. You can think of it as being able to remember what notes are in chords. There's many different practical uses. It's, it's fantastic once you understand. And really, it all comes down to remembering uh, one little mnemonic. Really, that's pretty much it. it. It helps so much when you understand that. So we're gonna dive in and by the end of the video, you'll understand again what sharps or flats are in each key signature, what key signatures actually are, and how you can use this. So definitely it helps to grab a pen uh, and, and some paper and go along with me and draw the circle. So it all comes back to a circle or you can think of it like a clock. I think that really helps. So when you think of it as a clock, you've got 12 and then it just goes clockwise around to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And we will be talking about clockwise and anti-clockwise. So clockwise, you count up from 12, 12, one, two, three, four, etc. And anti-clockwise, you go backwards. So 12, 11, 10, nine. Brilliant, okay. You've got the groundwork so far. Now, at the very top of the clock, you start with C. Now, the reason you start with C is in the key signature of C, there's no sharps or flats. Now, if already you're thinking, you're like clicking the tab, you're running for the hills, like that awesome Iron Maiden song. Already, if you're like, what? How is that working out? So all you need to do is to create a major scale or to find out all the notes that are in one key signature, you just play an order of tones and semitones. So how you do that is you play, you start on C or the third fret. So let's do a C major scale together. You start on the third fret of the fifth string and you play an order of tones and semitones. So the order is tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Now if that's freaking you out a little bit, a tone equals two frets and a semitone equals one fret or a single fret. That's the best way to remember it. So if you start on C, follow the recipe. Move up a tone, then you go to D. Move up another tone, E. A semitone, you've got F. Another tone, G. Another tone, A. Another tone, B. And a semitone, C. So if you follow there, we've got just like the musical alphabet, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C no sharps or flats, and it would just keep going on and on. So once you've played that C note, you could play a D, E, it just on and on. So there are all the notes in the C major scale, which are all the notes in the C major key signature. That's why C is at the top, because there's no sharps or flats. Now, in order to work out the different order, there's one trick that you can do, and it will definitely help you. So you've got C. So what you now wanna do is you want it to work out one o'clock or the next tick of the clock. You want to work out a fifth above, a perfect fifth. Now, if you know your theory, you could start working at that with that information already. But if you're not sure, you just move up seven frets on the guitar. So start with C, third fret on the fifth string. Move up seven frets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you count up the note names, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. So the first tick of the clock is going to be G. So G is going to be our one o'clock. So now you've got G. Once you understand that you've got G and it's seven semitones away, for the first half of the clock again, from 12 till six, you just continue up like that. So now you've got G. If you were to find a G note and you would count up seven semitones or seven frets from G, you would get D. Continue from D. If you count up seven frets up from D, you would get A. If you get from A, you go up seven semitones again, you get E. From E, you move up seven semitones again and you would get B. And finally, from B, you move up seven semitones and you get F sharp. And that's six o'clock, that's where you stop. Okay, that's the first half of the clock. Now the, that half of the clock will be all of the sharps. Now we work out a different way. So now we go from C and we move out backwards. So now this time, instead of going forward seven semitones, we go backwards. So let's go from C, but this time let's go all the way up from the eighth fret on the sixth string. Count backwards seven frets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The note that you're playing, the first fret of the sixth string, is actually an F note. So now you get F. And then once you've got your F note, that would be 11 o'clock on the clock. And if you go seven frets back from that, you've got B flat, seven frets back from that, E flat, seven frets back from that, A flat, seven frets back from that, D flat, so on and so on. Hopefully this is making sense so far. So you've got all of the sharps on that side 
and all of the flats, and it's easy to remember because they've already got flats in a lot of them in the note names, so you just remember it that way. So well done, doing such a great job. Now in order to work out the sharps and the flats, you just remember this mnemonic. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. That's it. So Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Just do the first letter of each of those words. So F sharp, C sharp, so on and so on. So when you've got 12 o'clock, you've got C major. No sharps or flats. The next talk, you've got one o'clock, you've got G. G has got one sharp and Father Charles. So it's F, F sharp. Next, when you go down to D, you've got two sharps. You've got Father Charles, F sharp and D sharp. Next, continue down. You've got F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, Father Charles goes. Next, Father Charles goes down. Father Charles goes down and. So that's how you would have worked them out. It's just that mnemonic. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Trust me, you'll hate it by the end of this video, but it will stick in your head. Now, if you're working out the flats, it's slightly different. So start with the 12 o'clock, no sharps or flats, C. Keep coming back to C. It's really important to remember that there's no sharps or flats in C. Now, if you go backwards for flats, 11 o'clock or F has one flat and it is, instead of Father Charles, you reverse it. So you start on B for battle. So no sharps or flats, 11 p.m. has one flat and it is B flat, battle. Next, if you go back down, you've got battle ends, B flat and E flat. Next, you've got B flat, E flat, A flat. Next, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. That's how you work it out. So now you've got all of the notes in all of those key signatures. Each different point on the clock is a key signature. Now, what is a key signature? It's an order of notes. It's gonna work for that particular key signature, that particular grouping. That means that all of your chords that are within that key are gonna be made up of those notes. All of your scales that are within that particular key are gonna be made up of those groups of notes. So you can start writing melodies with those notes. You can start creating chords with those notes. Super important. If you've watched the chord video and you already know and understand how to make chords, then this key signature part is so incredibly helpful. So now you know all of the notes in every single key signature that there is, whether it's sharps or flats. You might be thinking to yourself, Pat, how is this gonna help me in my musical ability? How is this circle of fifths? How is it actually, how can I use it? So in each one of those points, if you were to write out a major scale, so tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, or think of it as T meaning two frets, S meaning a single fret. If you were to write out all of those different notes, you would get a major scale. So let's go with C major, for example. So C major, here are the notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, no sharps or flats. Now, here's where it helps that you understand these different notes. So you've got that major scale. If you were to put a number under each of them, from each one of those points, you can make a chord. So from each of those points, you can make a chord. So you've got C major, then you've got D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished finally, and then back to C. So you can create a chord from each of those points. Now how I could work that out so quickly is I know that in C major, there is only, there's no sharps or flats. Now I know that in G major, there's one sharp and it's F sharp. So instead of there being a B diminished, there's going to be an F sharp diminished. That's how you start working out these different major scales and putting them all into practice. And now you know the order of chords as well. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. So now you've got all of those different notes. You know how to make the major scale. You know what notes from the key signature. You know what chords are gonna be in each key signature, the triads. So now you can write so many songs because you know that you know what chords are gonna sound great within a key signature. Whew, so much theory. Now, if you, if you are unsure, if I went too quickly, definitely leave a comment below. Otherwise, check out this playlist of 100 theory-related videos. Everything's in more depth, so it will help you there. Otherwise, check out this other lesson. And if you do, if it's too, if it's, you feel bamboozled, definitely send me a message at Pat David Music. I get back to you every day. And I do wanna make sure that everyone is on the same page. But otherwise, leave a like if you like the video. But I'm Pat from Pat's Music and I'll see you all again. Bye.